versus Tom Ross. Again, they're getting ready to start game three. Alex is on four color Delver. Tom is on Infect. Both players are 2-0. and oh. uh, How do you think this matchup plays out? So it depends on how much practice Alex has. I believe that the Delver decks are generally favored. The All the cheap removal and counter spells can be really tough for Tom to battle through. The thing that's going to be pivotal, though, is if Alex tries to pick a fight inside of combat, Tom can really blow him out. So the typical play pattern that the Delver deck wants to follow is just let Tom attack with his infect creature, take the infect damage, and then post combat, then you try to kill the creature. So that way, if Tom is able to protect it, you don't end up eating a lot of infect damage. So that's going to be the main uh, point as to whether or not Alex is favored or not, is whether or not he adopts that play pattern. Now, one thing I do want to point out is Alex does have a copy of Is It Static Caster in his sideboard, Ooh. which has the potential to be very, very gross. That is very nice. Yeah, that is a card that can really lock Tom out of the game. Generally speaking, the Delver decks, they're going to have to one for one everything that their opponent is doing. But Is It Static Caster is just a one card machine gun. You know, it's like the, uh, you know, the guy in the front line with the turret just mowing people down. <laughs> Except instead of uh, people, it's going to be Tom's infect creatures. So it looks like Alex has kept his opener and Tom is just kind of tanking. Oh, so it looks like they both kept their hands. Tom is going to start off with a Gitaxian probe going down to 18 and going to reveal some cards. Uh, I believe that's a Delver of Secrets. Uh, yeah. Checklist card, yep. uh, the altar there for, for Alex. We've got a Brainstorm, a Flooded Strand, Young Pyromancer, Deathrite Shaman, and two copies of Ponder. That is a very good and very classic Delver hand. But Not my, good in this my question is do you lead on Delver or Deathrite Shaman? So it depends on what Tom does. If Tom just plays an infect creature, I'm more inclined to just fire off a Ponder. Now that Tom has done nothing, I'm probably going to play. The, well, it depends on if I drew a land or not. If I didn't draw a land, I think I'm going to play the Deathrite Shaman. If I did draw a land, I'll play the Delver. So Tom just leads on a fetch and passes. Alex is going to play his Flood Strand, and he's going to crack it. So it looks like here we're going to get an Underground Sea, and it could still be either. Yeah. Sea can cast both. I don't know. This is why I don't play the four-color Delver deck. <laughs> because it's so difficult to figure out which one of those two one-drops is going to be correct here. My gut's telling me that Deathrite Shaman, since he needs to, wants to get to a point before Tom where he can cast two spells a turn, but it looks like uh, he's going to go with the Deathrite Shaman. So Alex is going to play Deathrite and pass back to Tom. Alex is on 19 from the fetch. Tom is on 17 from the fetch. Now let's see what Tom's got up his sleeve. So the nice thing about playing the Deathrite Shaman first is Tom was on the play, uh, but Alex is basically able to steal the play back with Deathrite Shaman because he's gonna he's the one who's gonna have the mana advantage in this. So do you think that if Alex was on the play maybe it's correct to play Deathrite or play Delver instead of Deathrite Shaman? I usually would, but I usually play the Delver decks a bit more aggressively than other people. For example, whenever when I played Teamer, I have a tendency to jam things, particularly on the opening turns where a lot of other people that I know play things a little bit more conservatively. So it's a little hard to say exactly what the best play is between those two. Uh, if anyone's listening on Twitter, though, you should let us know what you think. I mean, this is a pretty interesting oh, yeah. question. Yeah, ab absolutely. Please, yeah. please let us know with the hashtag SCG Philly. You can tweet at myself and Andrew. Uh, let us know, you know what you think on that play, whether it should be Deathrite Shaman or Delver of Secrets. Tom, on the other hand, is just going to uh, play a Tropical Island. He's going to use his Green Sun Zenith to find a Noble High Arc and pass back to Alex. And now this is Tom basically countering the Deathrite Shaman by accelerating his own mana base. So now he's sort of stolen the play back from Alex. So Alex is going to fall to 18 on his fetch. Uh, he's going to get a Volcanic Island, which will give him access to red mana uh, alongside that Deathrite Shaman. So something like Young Pyromancer Lightning Bolt could be a very good turn for Alex here. Yeah, that would be phenomenal if you could do that. Although, sometimes you just want to save your burn spells for the infect creatures. The four-color Delver deck, it doesn't have much card advantage. Uh, Young Pyromancer can be a form of card advantage, but generally speaking, you don't have that much real card advantage. The one thing that Alice can do, though, is if he can just line up his removal spells with Tom's creatures, 
and Tom is left with a bunch of pump spells, those cards are effectively dead. And that is essentially card advantage in a roundabout way. And that's certainly something that Alex is likely to leverage. So Alex is just going to exile a land with his Deathrite Shaman and cast a Volcanic Island, leaving an underground CF and pass it back to Tom. He does have a couple of Ponders in his hand, still has that Delver of Secrets. I have to imagine if he also picked up something like Spell Pierce or if he's just going to fire off a Brainstorm here on his end step to try and make a token with that Pyromancer. Yeah, the Brainstorm since his opening hand, so I imagine that's what he's going for. I certainly would have preferred to see the Ponder here, but Alex, it looks like he does have a Spell Pierce. Not 100% sure, but I believe he has one in his hand, so it makes sense that he would hold it there. A little surprising, though, because what's the worst that Tom is going to do on his turn? He doesn't have any yeah. haste in fact creatures. Well, and it looks like we're going to get a 1-1 one, one elemental token here. I do want to point out that the Dylan Donegan token is an imposter. Um. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the original OG uh, <laughs> elemental token was our good friend Chris Van Meter. But Alex is going to go ahead and pick up some new cards here with that Brainstorm. Uh, if he happens to find a Force of Will, he might be looking at trying to snag that Blighted Agent. I actually really like the... I, I like your token a lot too, but the Dylan Donegan... I like, one is, I like Dylan's token. Yeah, it's one of my favorite illustrations. I've actually been meaning to get him to sign a couple and use them as bookmarks. He is a worthy successor. Yeah. So it looks like Alan... Or we're going to pass it back to Alex. We're going to get a Ponder. It's going to give him another Elemental. And I imagine that he's just looking for some kind of removal spell here to try and snag that Blighted Agent. Mm, he hasn't found one. He does have a Wasteland there that he can use to try and cut Tom off some mana, being as Tom didn't play a third land. Yeah, I don't think Tom's bottleneck is going to be mana. And also, Alex just doesn't have that much disruption. So Tom could potentially just have enough mana to kill Alex over the next two turns rather than all at once. So I don't think the Wasteland is really enough disruption. Alex really wants to get that Infect creature off the table while he can. So Alex is just going to shuffle on the Ponder. He's going to pick up a copy of Stifle, it looks like. We might see another Ponder here since he did have two in his opener. So one thing that's interesting about the four-color Delver deck as opposed to the Teamer Delver deck that I, I like is the, four the Teamer Delver deck gets to play cards like Rough, which can be an absolute blowout against a board state like this. But because Alex is playing the four-color variety, he really can't afford to play that card. Another card that can be great in these situations is Forked Bolt. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Alex does have a copy of Fire Ice in his deck, which would have been nice to find. He does have a Disfigure in the sideboard that I imagine he brought in. Um, so, uh, plus, uh, obviously, we have the normal Lightning Bolts. So now Alex only has one mana available via the Deathrite Shaman, so this might be a good place for Tom to try to pick a fight. So we've got... Of Verdant Catacombs, it looks like he does have a copy of Become Immense in his hand and a Vines of the Vastwood, so Tom could potentially try and get in a bunch of damage here. Yeah, we will see how this goes. It, it'll be interesting to see how patient Tom wants to be with this. He may want to use his mana while he can, or he may just wait till next turn. You know what might happen is he might um, cast the Vines of the Vastwood first, and try and bait Alex in to try and to eat his land with Deathrite Shaman, and then in response, use uh, eat it with his Become Immense, countering the Deathrite Shaman activation and cutting Alex off of his mana for Spell Pierce. Yeah, that would be an awesome play. <laughs> <laughs> Tom is the boss. He's one of my most favorite players to watch. Yeah. He's so good with Infect. He's played it so much. And this is really his classic, classic wheelhouse. So it looks like we're just going to get a Green Sun Zenith here instead. And this is pretty reasonable. Tom doesn't need to rush. He can set something up. Alex isn't going to kill him that quickly. And as Tom builds his board and watches Alex spin his wheels with Cantrip, Tom can just sort of set up the perfect situation. Yeah, if, if Tom is getting a Noble Hierarch here. I wonder why he didn't do a pre-combat to get in an extra point of Infect damage. Well, he might have just won. 
He might have hoped that Alex was just going to bolt inside of combat. And then he could kill him. Right, because that is certainly something that a lot of inexperienced players will go for. And I'm not particularly familiar with Alex. And he seems like he may be a, a younger kid, so Tom may be trying to take advantage of that. So he does do two infect damage to Alex, which is going to put him at two poison. He does have that become immense in his hand for next turn, so Alex is on the brink of death, whether he knows it or not. We are going to see a ponder here, and I feel like this turn Alex has to try and... Oh, there's a red elemental blast. But he doesn't have. Well, he does have the Deathrite Shaman. I feel like Alex just has to live through this turn and generate enough tokens to try and kill Tom on the next combat. But there's a probe, so he's going to be able to see what's going on. Alex is going to go down to 16 on this probe, and Tom is going to show him Vines of the Vastwood and Become Immense. Become Immense is a lethal card. And essentially, I think Alex's hands are kind of tied. I don't think that he can... Well, he's, does he still have a Spell Pierce in his hand? He does still have a Spell Pierce. He also has an Abrupt Decay. Yeah, he could have potentially... Red Blasted the Blighted Agent and had Spell Pierce to counter the Vines, but now Tom Ross has a lot more mana. So Tom, or Alex is just going to attack for five, put Tom down to eight, and pass back. And Tom has found a wasteland, which is going to be real nice. So Tom might just have the win here. Yeah, if he doesn't think that he has... Like, if he doesn't think that Alex has any way to interact with the Become Immense, then he can just... Well, I think Tom is 100% going to go for the win here because he's essentially dead on the crackback, right? Yes. Just now or never. Now Alex is in a tough spot because he knows what Tom has. He knows this is his only chance to fire off the Abrupt Decay, but he also knows that Tom's has, Tom has Vines of the Vastwood to counter it. Yep. And if he doesn't do that, then all he has is the Spell Pierce, which I believe Tom is going to have mana to pay for. Actually, Tom might be one mana short. Because Tom has access to five mana. And he's going to need to pay one mana, now one more mana, for the Become Immense. Well, the, he has a fetch, and the, the Vines will be the fifth card. So he'll only have to pay one mana for the Become Immense. But it looks like Alex is just going to use his Abrupt Decay here. And that's going to spell Yeah, this looks like a death. win for Tom. He just has to decide if he wants to play around days? Can he afford to play around days? Is Force of Will something that he has to be worried about? And this is what happens when you're not completely familiar with all the matchups. You can get caught in situations where you know, you basically make the wrong line of play. But hopefully Alex will learn from it and he'll uh, know that maybe he should save his Spell Pierce instead. 